When central banks artificially perturb the normal functioning of markets and money, value, interest rates, we are orchestrating catastrophe. Interest rates are a vital feedback loop that direct the efficient and productive flow of capital. When we hold interest rates at or near zero it is the same as stopping a person's circulatory system. To place debt levels into context. US debt to GDP, 2019, 100%. 2020, 150% actual. 2021, 170% estimated. Spain 100%. Italy 130%. Greece 180%. These levels may increase to 170% for the US, as there are plans to print more money. 200% for 2021 is not outrageous. A 50% increase in debt for the US is 10E12, or nearly double the amount of low-yielding debt. And most of it will never be paid back. Gold to $3,000 plus dollars by the end of next year but fundamentally should be $5,000, as many nations are printing money and low-yielding debt will triple. Even if inflation was able to make real rates negative minus 4.00%, it would take 30 years to reduce a 100% GDP ratio to 60%. That being said, the real risk is higher interest rates driven by inflation, stagflation and stagnating wage growth, being unable to keep up with asset price inflation via currency devaluation, money printing. And yet, central banks continue to buy bonds in excessive amounts and push rates even lower. A self-destructive system. The real risk is a collapse of the whole monetary system. As fiat currencies become ever less valuable against real goods. Systemic collapse and the resulting rise in totalitarianism. The heart is failing and nothing will work to keep it going. But, they aren't actually trying to keep it going because they want a digital currency. Collapse is 90% certain by or during November. Too much has been printed, too much supply. Buy gold or silver, much better returns. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. The economic effect of the inflicted tyranny excused by it, will take at least one generation to determine. The insanity invoked that destroyed the economy that feeds us is inexcusable. The stock market, with its unfaltering support from the bank cartel may do all right, but those of us who happen to work for a living will not recover any time soon. It was evident to me early on that the cure was far worse than the disease. About two weeks in, when it became obvious that Ferguson who predicted more than 2 million dead in the US was deeply in error. Too bad that governments were either too stupid, or too evil to backtrack. Ferguson has a long-standing reputation for wildly exaggerating the effects of disease, and yet here we are. Our supply chain was disrupted, tens of millions unemployed, and money being created out of thin air at Weimar levels. For no discernible reason, except the propaganda. It's likely the 99.9% .9 will never recover, since its destruction was part of the plan. To extract what little wealth they had left and deliver it to the 0.1%. We are in the midst of a deadly pandemic, but there is no virus involved, just the gang of psychopaths in charge. The Fed's QE into infinity will precipitate the collapse of the dollar and subsequent depression. The Fed will debase the dollar and cause hyperinflation and the ensuing calamity will be apocalyptic. It will be worse this time because we are headed to an inflationary depression rather than a deflationary one. At least until the last deflationary one, the average person may not have had much money, but what money he did have actually bought more stuff. In the coming inflationary one, the dollars you do have will buy less, so the average month's standard of living will go down even more. Critical events are happening so fast, all around the world, as markets cool, political unrest heats up. It's all part of the greatest depression. When people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it, and the markets are losing it, too. The global slowdown will accelerate and equity markets will decline. Mergers and acquisitions have fallen 11% so far this year, as companies brace for periods of growing economic uncertainty. To keep the cheap money flowing, this year more than 30 central banks around the globe have lowered their interest rates and dozens are expected to cut their rates again next quarter. Last week, the Australian Central Bank dropped interest rates, already at their lowest in history, to a new low of 0.75%. India also cut its rates again last week, 
bringing them down to 5.15 from 5.40% in hopes of propping up their slowing economy. With auto and motorcycle sales dramatically down, consumer spending markedly slowing, and fears of a cash crunch, India's central bank tweeted out assurances that there will be plenty of dough for depositors. They claimed the reports of bank instability were rumors. China, the world's second-largest economy, posted its slowest economic growth since 1990. To date, government measures have failed to reverse the trend. Refusing to aggressively lower rates, Chinese attempts to boost the economy with fiscal policy, such as infrastructure spending, have failed. Infrastructure investment is up only 4% from January to August compared with 20% only two years ago. Moreover, Chinese private bond defaults are up 60% in the first eight months of the year. Countries accumulated more debt than they can ever repay. Corporations accumulated more debt than they can ever repay. Consumer accumulated more debt than they can ever repay. This time around you will not be able to bail out the corporations without bailing out all consumers. What happens to money when you must print to keep humans from rising up and destroying the elites? What happens to the elites when the consumer figures out they were played for fools and the entire surveillance state was built in anticipation of the big collapse that's coming? The non-1% is very close to collectively waking up, it will make the Arab Spring look calm and peaceful. The monetary inflation, a derivative of QE and money printing, has been going on since the, the advent of fiat paper money, to sustain perpetual poverty, and force serfs to work to survive, thereby effectively giving the money printers the power to hold the advantage of bargaining, trade, and commerce. Which of course results in low wages, price controls, monetary value control, legal oppression through bribing state and federal employees to write laws, and because they can print money infinitely, they can purchase, own, and control everything under the sun, globally. Basically it's the quintrillionaires versus the millionaires, because the serfs don't have money. Global neo-serfdom in short. The difficulty now is that the measuring yardstick all these years was gold, and now its price is totally distorted out of reality, and even if gold is taken as a yardstick, its demand is not what it used to be, there is a whole generation that does not understand its utility, and therefore it does not want to buy or hold it. Add to this the infinite quantity of money generated out of every hole in the bankster's body, all those, derivatives, and all. Since the manufacturing capacity of the countries have become incompatible and not comparable in any standard way, supply-side calculations are also distorted. The normal way out of a depression is either the 0.1% buys all the assets in the country, and take the people into serfdom, or the 99% demolishes the castle walls, introduces a new currency and resets the money market. We are opting for the first. I do believe the serfdom has been perpetual, the bankers sustain it, and the castle can no longer protect the local serfs because of growing immigration and street terrorism. The pretty and rather large corporate buildings will continue to become vacant, unused, and randomly ransacked by the serfs and foreign serfs till everyone begins to see the result of neo-feudalism as only ever more poverty for all. Obviously the banks can't feasibly continue to bail out the zombie core which add little or no value. The bankster pricks didn't learn their lesson because the CDOs are being used now more than they were in 08 and when that pitch pops it's over. There won't be any bailouts for the banks this time around either so they'll all go bankrupt. There won't be any need in running on the banks either. When the currency is debased to the point of worthlessness what's the point in doing a bank run? Those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it. People just can't seem to get that. One thing I've noticed, in keeping up with not only how this is playing out in the US, but also in other developed countries, is that there seems to almost be a spell cast upon central bankers, money managers, and politicians, which is leading each and every one of them down the same path. It's almost like an orchestrated evil is at work, pulling the strings of these puppets, accomplishing its will. This does not end well is one thing I'm sure of. Prepare accordingly, if preparations of that magnitude are even possible. I wish everyone the best of luck, because this is going to be a pitch. This time it is going to be apocalyptic financially. Somehow we have thousands of more subprime loans, defaulting home, auto and student loans now than were issued in 2008. It's crazy. Meanwhile, in Europe, in addition to playing the monetary stimulus card, the European Central Bank's president Mario Draghi called for unity, urging member states of the Eurozone to commit to fiscal spending. 
Numerous European nations, including Germany, which is slowing into recession however, are opposing the ECB's stimulus mandate. They want to keep their budgets balanced and are not willing to drag their nation into debt. On the bankster side, to boost fees lost because of low interest rates, down about 20% this year, banks increased their lending to corporations eager to borrow cheap money. Thus, the $250 trillion global debt bubble continues to swell. Be it monetary or fiscal stimulus, it's becoming increasingly clear that neither measure, although they might temporarily boost sagging economies, will not reverse the oncoming Greatest Depression. We forecast that U.S. equities, however, have topped out, it will push them much lower. Further, as economies continue to decline, social unrest will dramatically escalate, as evidenced in nations from South America to Africa, from Asia to the Middle East, and from Europe, soon to the United States and we have more market manipulation. Fiat is about to die for a very long time after this. This is going to be so big that I can't even wrap my head around the consequences yet. We are moving towards an economic Armageddon that will shake the world to its core. Silver, gold, and lead will be very useful in the coming years, prepare accordingly. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.